Hello everybody and welcome to the Vector Sector. My name is Dan Grady and in this tutorial video we're going to be talking about creating realistic looking leather effects in Adobe Illustrator using the Photoshop effect gallery that is built in. This is kind of following in the same footsteps as my last video that I made creating realistic wood textures. It's following many of the same steps. Um, so you can watch that video beforehand um, if you'd like to learn a couple more things. Um, as a little warning before we start here, I'm going to be um, assuming that you understand um, a few things. This is going to save a lot of time from this video, so that's why I'm doing this. I don't normally do this, but it's, I'm going to say right now it's not a beginner video. Um, there's a lot of steps involved here, um, and so I expect you to understand the difference between raster and vector graphics. Um, I also expect you to understand how to create new swatches and gradients, and um, I think that's it. If you understand those things, you should have no problem um, starting up right here where, where I'm going to start. Okay, so I have a couple of different examples here of uh, a leather texture that I turned into a graphic style that I applied to these basic shapes um, to create some neat looking things. I got a little journal here and a little notepad and a little piece of paper. And it's amazing how simple this really was, especially with that graphic style that I already had saved, I was able to create this little notepad and piece of paper just within a couple minutes. Um, graphic styles are really amazing and it's really neat that you could save these cool textures as a graphic style to apply to anything you want. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hide these two layers. We're gonna start with our blank white canvas. Just that also before we start, go up to your document raster effect settings in effect and make sure your resolution is high because if it is low, your, uh, your raster effects that you're going to be applying through the effect gallery are going to look really muddy. They're going to look really bad because they're going to be um, low res. So make sure you're at medium or at least high um, for your raster effects. Also make sure that you start your shape as around the same size as you intend your final output to be. That's something uh, that people that use Photoshop would be very familiar with. Um, but a lot of us Illustrator um, people, we have this tendency to not really worry too much about the size of things because we're, we just think, hey, I could scale it later. Um, that's kind of a bad habit. Um, luckily, since I use Photoshop a lot, I always make sure everything's set to this, the appropriate size at the beginning. Um, and that's a good habit for whenever you're using raster effects as a graphic style, not um, vector. So what I want you to do is create a, a basic shape and using brown, some kind of brown color, I like kind of reddish brown, so which, which is what this is, um, I want you to create a nice brown that looks kind of leather-like. Um, if it's not a good brown, I think you kind of lose that whole leather um, look and it will never uh, really translate very well as leather. Um, so yeah, no, no rainbow or um, purple leather here because that's gonna look, it's probably not gonna look like leather. Um, so I want you to create a nice gradient, kind of like how I have here. Um, I'm going to this video expecting you to understand how to create gradients. So I just want a basic linear gradient, dark on the outsides, light on the inside with brown. Okay, and we're gonna be using those swatches you create uh, light and darker browns later as well. Okay, I don't really want to have a rectangle here, um, so I'm going to go to Effect, Convert Shape to Rounded Rectangle. Um, that's non-destructive, you could turn this off. I'm just doing this for looks, because basically I, I think it'll look a little better for Rounded Rectangle. Um, I guess I wouldn't expect the leather to have those sharp rectangle features. Um, so I'm going to do a rounded rectangle, which you can turn off at any time in the appearance panel. Um, that's a great thing about the appearance panels. It'll show everything you've applied to a shape, and it's not destructive. You can take it off or change it later, which is really cool. I love the appearance panel, and that's why I keep it in my workspace at all times. And I think you should too. A lot of people don't. Um, you're really missing out if you don't understand the appearance panel. Okay, the heart of this effect really is within the, the effect gallery. Um, what we're going to be doing is using the sponge effect that is built into the artistic folder here. Um, 
really just experimenting with the different effects in here. You could get all sorts of neat things. Uh, when I did the wood texture a week ago, I was really just kind of fooling around with different things in here and found out that you could create a, a wood texture as I did with this leather. Um, so it's kind of fun to go in here and using a shape that has a, a gradient like this, you can kind of see all sorts of different things that make uh, realistic textures and you can make a lot of really realistic looking things really quickly using uh, the effect gallery. It's pretty amazing. I used to hate this because I thought these effects looked really ugly, but if you're really careful and with the parameters and variables, you can make really good looking textures. Now for this, using the sponge um, effect, I'm gonna keep my brush size low and the definition low. If you have the definition too high, it's gonna look like sandpaper, which is great if you're trying to make sandpaper, but not today. I'm um, just gonna do like one. Smoothness, that one, um, I'm going to just tell you, do it as low as possible. Uh, that's not going to help your effect at all, because uh, really all it is doing is blurring it. And so keep the smoothness down as low as you could possibly go, which is one. Okay, hit OK. Apply that. There we have it. Okay, and you can see all the things that we've applied over here in our appearance panel. Okay, so we're going to go to stroke now and give that the light stroke we had earlier. Okay, and there it is. What we want to do is we want to offset that stroke. So we go up to Effect, Distort and Transform, and Transform. We're gonna scale that in. I don't know what your parameters would be. It might be a little different depending on the size of your shape. I'm just gonna put 95 and go to Preview and see what that does. We're gonna create, we wanna offset this because we wanna create a stitch. Um, it's gonna make it look a little bit more handmade. Um, and realistic. Uh, I'm not really liking this, so I want my vertical to be, um, let's see, like 97. I'm gonna hit 97 and tab. That's looking pretty good to me. Okay, cool. Go to OK, and with your stroke still selected, go up to stroke here in the control panel, uh, give it rounded caps, and go to dashed line. It's automatically gonna create our little stitch there. Pretty cool. Okay. Um, you could mess around with the dash and gap points if it's not looking correct to you. Um, so go ahead and select that dashed uh, stroke again and make a duplicate. So go up, down here you'll see the duplicate selected item button. Hit that and select the bottom one on the layer stack there. And we're gonna select our dark color once you select it, you'll see it update here, but you're not going to see it here because it's directly under. Um, so what you need to do is you need to go to, up to Effect um, and uh, trans Distort and Transform and Transform. Apply New Effect because we're applying it on top of that scale that we did. And we're going to move this in. So go to Preview. We're going to move this in. Maybe just one pixel because we just want to offset it a little bit one pixel horizontal, one pixel vertical. Okay, you can start to see it here though, it needs to be a little darker. So I'm gonna go up the Recolor Artwork dialog box up here in the control panel, find that swatch, and I'm gonna drag the black slider down to make it darker so I could actually see that. Okay, there it is. Now if you look close, we have our stitch and we have the black under it. Okay, that is really all you need to do. Um, the great thing now is I could go to Window and bring up my graphic styles and select this object and move the whole thing into, into there. And I could apply that to a new shape. So for example, if I make a new shape here, which is a rectangle, and select that graphic style and this is a different one I was doing, you'll see it appear directly um, on top of this um, without having to manually put in all those effects. And if you do it, go to Effect and Stylize Drop Shadow, you could even create a little bit more depth, which is actually needed. Okay, you see that there? You'll see in this other one I made, I have some even more textures um, that I created using um, some uh, pattern swatches. 
Um, if you'd like to see how I do that, I'll show you here. Go ahead and select your shape and click on New Fill. Okay, that's on top of my strokes, so that's why they disappeared. So drag that under the strokes. You'll see them come back. And I'm going to hit backslash to get rid of that. Okay, go to the, uh, there's a little fly out right here on the bottom of the swatches panel. And you'll see um, patterns. These are really neat. A lot of people don't know even know about these. Uh, basic graphics, and I believe it's in textures. And it was one of these. I can't remember which one. It's this one, I believe. Uh, you probably cannot see this at all. But it's called Meso Mesotint Irregular. That's the one I'm going to be using. Uh, it looks really bad right now, as you can see. But if I find out in the appearance panel and untwirl it, you'll see opacity. I'm going to give this, let's try overlay as a blending mode. Can't remember what I used before. That's kind of working. Um, we'll try that as a texture. Now I'm going to put the opacity down so it's not so harsh. Watch that apply. Okay, there we go. Now you can see I have even even more little textural things going through my leather here. And I could save that as a new graphic style and save it as well. Um, I'll bring up my old examples again. Just by adding some, some text, some paper, some buttons, um, you could do a lot of different things with this texture effect that in Adobe Illustrator. Um, so experiment around, see what you could do. Um, and uh, also check out my video for the wood textures. And if you're on Facebook, go ahead and search the Vector Sector and join my Facebook page where I'm going to be posting tips and tricks. Thank you. See you later.